the newest Foxy and Booba Beauty Yukong has come out to accompany Ting Yun in the Harmony Path, going with the element of Harmony with the element of imaginary she is the newest harmony support and she is amazing so let's get right into it my name is gib and let's get into yukong's builds her light cones her traces what she does and how you can utilize her in your teams all right starting with yukong's normal attack here her basic attack you know just a classic basic attack doing imaginary damage to the enemy but she has a special bonus basic attack from her talent 7 layers the 1 arrow where her basic attack is going to do extra damage and on top of that extra damage it will increase the weakness break or toughness break whichever you want to call it to the enemy so this is pretty much she has like increased the weakness break efficiency every other turn on her normal attack so this is going to allow for your rotation to be skill normal skill normal so that you can get increased break on the enemy if they are weak to imaginary. Next we have Yukong's skill here, oh, Emboldering Salvo. This is going to give you two stacks of Roaring Bowstrings. And you can only have two stacks of this, you cannot go above it. And when you have this active, the next two allies turns will have 70% increased attack. But this goes to everyone, so if you are ulting while you have these bowstrings on, it will not use it because it only counts turns, it doesn't count actions. It's a little bit, a little bit iffy with the wording, but I will show you here by example. When you do this with, say you have two DPS, as I'm showing here with Don Hung and the physical MC, when you do their skill into burst, you see that I still have the Roaring Bowstrings on both of them as I'm doing both of the skills, allowing me to get four uses out of the Roaring Bowstrings, and you could keep abusing this. Realistically, you would be using it four times if you have the perfect lineup where your DPS is going to go skill into burst and that would allow you to keep the Roaring Bowstrings up. Now regarding Yukong's ultimate, the Diving Kestrel, it has a little bit of like finicky wording. I'd say it's kind of bad because it says when Roaring Bowstrings is active and she uses her ultimate, it increases all allies crit rate and crit damage, but it doesn't tell you where that crit rate and crit damage goes. And actually it applies it as if your E gave it to you or your, your uh, Roaring Bowstrings original buff gave it to you. So it actually adds it on to the Roaring Bowstrings buff, which I will show. To have this buff, do make sure you have your skill active. So before you ult every time, you do want to have your skill active or you'll be wasting your ult and you'll be wasting it giving to her. And Yukong does get this buff. She does get the crit rate crit damage on this imaginary attack here. Next we have Yukong's technique here, Chasing the Wind. Her technique is where she goes Sanic speed and she can run around the map super fast. But on top of this, it'll make it so she starts the fight with two stacks of Roaring Bowstrings. However, the Roaring Bowstrings that she gets from her technique actually removes a stack when she uses when she uses a turn unlike when she cast it with her actual skill so do keep that in mind she will use a stack and you have only one stack after her turns end let's say she's going first on your team and you go yukong into your dps your dps will get one stack and let's say you had like uh say you had two dps and you wanted both of them to get it your second dps would not be able to get it because yukong and your first dps would get the buff all right and before heading to idolons here i want to talk about her bonus abilities and her ascension talents whichever you like to call these her extra traces her first bonus ability is going to be yukong can resist one debuff application for one time and this effect can be triggered again in two turns so every Every three rotations, you will be able to resist one debuff, which is really nice. Less potential to lose out on being able to buff up your allies. Then we have her bonus ability of Bowmaster. When Yukong's on the field, the imaginary damage dealt by all allies increases by 12%. This actually adds it onto your allies as if they had an imaginary damage planner on and it actually adds it into their stat. I will show it here on the side. So they actually get 12% imaginary damage as a stat. It's not like a buff or anything that shows. Not really like that's important, but just for specifics, it does actually add it into their stats. And then lastly here, we have Majestas, her last bonus ability. When her Roaring Bowstrings is active, she generates two energy every time an ally takes action. So this is able to get four energy every rotation you have with Roaring Bowstrings active which is really nice for ultimate uptime, getting your ult up faster. It'd be really huge to get this. It sucks, it is, the la it is the last bonus ability, but when your Yukong is level 80 and fully invested in, she will have way better ultimate uptime. Now let's talk about Yukong's Edolons here. Her Edolons, she is very solid E0, but her Edolons do add value to her, as most four stars do. 
Her first seed Dolan here, the Aerial Marshal, at the start of the battle increases the speed of all eyes by 10% for two turns. And she does get this speed bonus as well, so increased for her as well. Just a nice little buff, nothing too crazy. Her E2 though, this is very nice. Extra energy. This actually changes the rotation and makes it so you have your ult up way faster. When an ally's current energy is equal to its energy limit, so pretty much if you are on someone and their burst is fully up, you will be able to get five energy on Yukong, and it's every time that this does for each ally. And this only goes until she uses her ult. And then after that, it'll reset for those allies having their ult. So pretty much, ally gets ult, ally gets ult, ally gets ult. After that, she will have to ult before she can get energy from your allies having their ult up again. Next, we have her third Idolon, which is just the skill and basic attack increase, which everyone has. Then we have Idolon number four here. I don't know how to say this word, Zephyr. When Roaring Bowstring is active, she does 30% more damage to enemies. This is just a solid buff. She'll always have this up pretty much. Next, we have Idolon five, the August Deadshot. Your ultimate plus two and your talent. This is just another thing all characters have, you know, just a nice little skill booster, which is really nice. And then we have her last Idolon here, Idolon 6. When Yukong uses her ultimate, she immediately gains one stack of Roaring Bowstrings. Now, I have not been personally able to test this, but I would assume, because Hoyo usually is good with this stuff, that this will apply before she uses her ultimate, meaning that if you have E6, you don't need to have your skill active to get the crit rate crit damage, and you can just ult whenever you have it up. Let's say, because there can be times when you're in combat where your ult is up, and let's say you don't have your bowstrings up, but you want to give the buff to your allies when you have E6, which probably most people won't be having E6 unless you're a whale or you get lucky free to play. You will be able to pretty much abuse the bowstrings and just go crazy with it and always be able to do it off cooldown whenever it's up. I say off cooldown, but I mean like off rip, you know, as soon as you have it up, there would be no chance of you ever having to wait. Now let's get into the best light cones to be using on Yukong. So starting off immediately, I'm going to tell you that memories of the past and meshing cogs are insane on Yukong because they are going to allow you to get your ultimate up very nice on your rotations. Memories of Pass also gives you break effect which helps for your talent where you have that increased weakness break which will give you an increased slow which is really nice. And then Meshing Cogs, you have S5 for free because it's a three star. You should have this S5. And you're gonna get eight energy every rotation once per turn. Guaranteed because it uses attack or it gets hit. This is very free. Next, we have Past and Future and Bronya's Light Cone. Now, with these, you have to speed tune. And also with Bronya's Light Cone, you will not be able to get the skill point from using your ultimate because Yukong's ultimate is not a direct application of a buff to your allies. It's just to all of your allies, they just have a buff. I think it doesn't work because, like, she applies it to herself and then that applies it to everyone. I don't know why it doesn't work, but it does not work. You will not get the skill point. However, you will get the damage bonus for the next character that takes action and you will get the energy regenerate. This is mainly just a stat stick. You can use it. However, I'd recommend Memories of Past and Meshing Cogs. You do get a nice stat stick from this though. It has very high base attack, very high HP to keep you alive with the defense as well because it's a five star. So it is usable and you have the extra energy recharge. And then we have Dance and Dance and Carve. Dance and Dance, you know, you get the action forward, but to get the action forward, you're losing out on having better ultimate uptime from Memories of Past and Meshing Cog. So do keep that in mind, but it is a solid option. It gives you some nice stats as well as a four star. Next, we have Carve the Moon. This is the Battle Pass Light Cone with Ting Yun on it, her signature light cone. This light cone is good overall, just, you know, keep in mind that the buff is RNG but all the buffs are decent the only one that's kind of whatever is if you get the attack buff because she's already giving an attack buff you adding an attack buff onto that and then lastly we have planetary rendezvous which is not bad saving it for last because you will only be using planetary rendezvous if you're playing Yukong in a mono imaginary team you get a damage type increase as the wearer for 12 percent which is kind of like Yukong's pass for imaginary so you'd have, a, you'd have a double on that. So you'd have 24% imaginary damage bonus, which is pretty big. Do only want to be doing it in a mono imaginary, but it is a good light cone. Just you won't get use out of it if you're using it other teams. So do keep that in mind. But highly recommend S5 meshing cogs or memories of past. If you want to do lower investment, meshing cogs will be cheaper as it is a three star and materials for light cones get more
more expensive as they go up in rarity so do keep that in mind all right now let's talk about the best relics you can use on your yukon gear classic what you're gonna go for is four piece musketeer four piece musketeer is the safest most all around and gives you good buffs that you'll be able to utilize very efficiently gives you free speed and you get basic attack damage which will allow you to get some extra damage but you can also mix this with like a two-piece musketeer with a two-piece thief set or two-piece musketeer with a two-piece imaginary set those are pretty niche though and i would just recommend going for four-piece musketeer so you have that free speed less speed tuning you have to do if you want your yukong to go first and for planar ornaments you can either run fleet of the ageless for that extra eight percent alley attack buff or you can go sprightly von walk for the extra energy regenerate and and to make sure that you have a super high chance of your Yukong going first in the fight because of this 40% action forward. And on top of this, to keep in mind, when you are using these, if you have this set, that you need 120 speed to get the set bonus or you're wasting that second part of the set bonus. Now with Yukong, you can either go for a sub DPS build or a full support with her having tanky stats build. I'd highly recommend going sub DPS because she has a lot of stuff in her kit that can give your team some overall huge damage bonus besides the buffs that she gives. But the tank build is lower investment and easy to build. So don't think you're going wrong if you go for a tankier Yukong. Now with tanky Yukong, you're gonna have her on just HP defense, speed boots, and then HP defense again on your planar and then energy recharge on your rope. But if you're going for a sub DPS build, you're going to look for more offensive stats, going for crit on your body, speed boots, imaginary, and then energy recharge rope so you still have that good ultimate uptime. All right, imagine my Ting Yun here is a Yukong. And with that out of the way, Yukong team comps. So Yukong team comps, we have the obvious mono imaginary. Now, would you believe me if I just zero pitied Locha? I don't think you would, but I did. I just zero pitied Locha. I was not pulling for him because I got Silver Wolf and I just got Locha. So imagine you have a mono imaginary team comp here. Ting Yun obviously is Yukong here. This team is very valid. The mono imaginary, you would be running her with Planetary Rendezvous in this. This would be your mono imaginary team comp. Now, okay, before going into some other team comps that I made for Yukong, I wanted to talk about if you're using Yukong with a character that is super fast, like my girl Silly here. So I want to talk about how you can have Yukong go last and start the fight with her technique where you would still have your bowstrings every turn. And at the start of the fight, you would be depending on your technique for your bowstrings because then you don't have to worry about speed tuning go faster than your Silly and you will still have your buff at the start of the round. And you don't have to worry about your Yukong needing to be faster than someone like Seelie, which is very hard to be faster than because she has so much in-kit speed buffs that she gets. And then for something like a Jing Yuan, I'm just going to recommend that you use Ting Yun because using Yukong with Jing Yuan, you would have to speed tune so that you have the buff for Jing Yuan, but then you also have the buff for Lightning Lord which would be extremely hard to do when you could just have Benediction, which is last and you don't have to speed tune. Now, for other team comps, it's going to be obviously very dependent on what you're fighting because HSR is very element dependent and you want to be breaking the weakness of the enemy you're fighting. That's why Silver Wolf is so strong, for example. But these are just two teams that I thought of that are that would be usable. Ting Yun still as Yukong, as uh, filler, Foxy and Beauty here. Right here, we've got Serval, Dan Hung. Do keep in mind if you're using Don Hunga with Yukong, she will not be able to give him his win res buff and you would have to get it from your healer, which is a little bit is a little bit of uh unfortunate. Um, but you know it is what it is. Still would be good for the crit and crit damage buff, but you would have to keep that in mind. For his win res pen, you would not be able to get that. Then I have this here, this is Sushang with you have one buffer, you have two sustain, and then you have your one DPS Sushang here with the Yukong. This is just an example team, depending on what you're fighting, you'd probably be fighting something with physical and imaginary weakness on this. This could be good against like a Jepardo, you know, something like that. A little Jeppy battle could be handled with this team and yeah. All right, we are at the end of the Yukong guide here. I hope you guys appreciate this one. If you did or you have comments or any questions or you have a criticism of something or you want to tell me something, I don't know, leave it down in the comments. Yukong is going to be coming out 1.2. Do gotta wait, unfortunately, but it's nice that we're getting a free four star Harmony imaginary character that is also a solid pickup to have on your account. Makes me solid, huh? Longevity Tour being a crit rate and crit damage buffer plus attack. Attack buffer is always good with that crit rate crit damage. That'll be nice, but we'll be seeing you 
Yukong is solid. Um, makes me solid. Goodbye.